Hi everyone, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now just to start off with, um, if you don't know, I actually live in a water or a lake community. And the other day we were taking our regular walk around the lake and uh, it just hit me how popular the lakefront homes are. Shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. But we were brainstorming after that and thought that it would be fun to go over the steps you need to take in order to build your own private lake on your rural vacant land if you don't happen to be near a, an already existing lake like we are. So I get a lot of questions from buyers, uh, many folks have found the perfect parcel of land and it's just but it's just missing that one feature and oftentimes that feature is a lake or a pond so I did want to say if you already have land or you are really excited to buy a parcel of land but just wish it had a lake it is possible to build one yourself but as with any big project, there are a number of steps that you need to go through. If you've watched any of our other videos, you know that we are very much into proper due diligence. So of course, our first step is to do your preliminary research. So before you even begin to seriously design and think about your lake, you do need to check a few basic items. The first being, the soil on your property. Now at this point, you don't necessarily need to hire a full soil analysis, but you want to get a general sense of what kind of soils are on your land to see if you can even build a lake there. You also want to do a quick purview of the existing laws. So that would be your local zoning regulations or any state laws that may prevent you from building a lake. And then finally, you want to think about the cost. So you probably have a budget in mind for how much you can spend on your lake and you'll want to make a few quick calls to some contractors to see if realistically you can build a lake for that price. The next thing you want to do is think about what you actually want the lake for because the lake's, per the lake's function or purpose is going to influence the design. And people want lakes for all manner of things, whether it's just an ornamental lake or whether you actually want to stock it with fish, it's going to have a huge impact on the size and depth. So figure out what you're aiming for before you go any further. All right, so now you want to get serious. At this point, you need to get a full profile of your soil. And you'll typically do this by hiring a geologist. And it's very important to have a, a really in-depth analysis of the soils. First, because not every soil type can support a lake. In general, clay is more effective than sandy or rocky soils. But also, ultimately, your designer is going to need, your designer and your engineer will need a full profile in order to accurately design the pond or lake. And a soil profile is also going to help you reevaluate your budget. When you know exactly what you're working with, you can get a better sense of the cost. Um, if you also know at this point what your function is going to be, you may have a better sense of size and depth. So you can at this point reevaluate the cost and try to come up with a more accurate number. And once you have your soil profile, you can hire your design team. So I'll say up front, a lake is not an easy project and it is not a do-it-yourself project. You really want to have a solid design team helping you in order to do everything properly and make sure your lake is constructed correctly. And this will save you money in the long term. So at the very least, you're going to hire a designer and a contractor but you may have some other consultants that you're going to need to hire as well. And if you are curious about where to find a designer, a good place to start is the Firm Finder in the American Society of Landscape Architects website. 
but you can also just do a Google search for local landscape architects or pond designers. And so at this point, the designer is gonna work with you to get into the details of the pond or lake. The first thing that they're going to look at is watershed size, because this will help determine the size of the lake or pond that is feasible. Now the watershed is the area of land around the lake that feeds into the lake. So all water or all runoff from the land in the watershed area will flow into your lake. And that means that if the watershed is too large, you're gonna have a lot of overflow issues. If it's too small, you're gonna have a hard time maintaining the level of the pond. So the watershed size will directly influence the pond size. And in terms of placement, your designer is going to work with you. They will find an area on the land that has a large enough watershed, but they also want to find a place on your property that already has a natural waterway. So this way you don't need to bring in a lot of water and continuously fill your pond. And your designer will also be able to help you through the legal or administrative landscape, so they'll, they'll help you take care of all required permits at this point to make sure you have any approvals you need. They may also be able to help you with insurance requirements. If not, you can always reach out to an insurance professional to see what kind of insurance you'll need to get during the construction phase and then also for your pond once it's built. So the designer, once they've helped you figure out where on the site the pond can be situated, they are then going to design the pond itself. They'll take care of most of the technical details, but there are a few things that they will be consulting you with. In particular, at this point, they will be nailing down the depth and size of the pond. And this is going to, in part, be a matter of your preference, but also what you want to use the pond or lake for and what, as we mentioned before, the watershed can support. They are also in their technical design going to need to address drainage. So in the event of a you know, heavy rainfall or other situation where there is a high volume of runoff into the pond, that extra water will need to go somewhere. So they are gonna have to build a drainage area this means that there will be a part of your land that will also be affected because it will need to be able to handle that runoff. And they'll likely work with you to see where on your land you would like that to be. And finally, they're gonna help you choose the landscaping around your pond. Now it's very important to have plants around the perimeter, at the very least grasses, because this will help prevent erosion and maintain your lake. The actual kinds of plants depend in part upon the, the actual requirement that the plants can uh, handle an area with a lot of water, but it's also going to depend on your own preferences as well. So they'll help you select plants. And then finally, you do have to continuously monitor your lake. Man-made lakes tend to suffer from a variety of issues, such as algae growth, if they are not maintained. So your designer should work with you and your contractor should work with you to have a proper maintenance plan. If you're also introducing fish or other wildlife, you may want to consult with a biologist or other such professional to see what you need to do to ensure that there is a healthy ecosystem in the lake. And uh, it's, it's not necessarily a simple process to maintain these lakes. I was talking with our lakes biologists the other day and every year they make sure that they monitor pH levels, you know, check for algae growth. Um, they have to do a full analysis to make sure that the lake can support the fish life. So make sure you understand what all of that involves. But of course hopefully at the end of this process you will have your beautiful man-made lake and now your perfect parcel of land. So that's about it for now. If you're not familiar with us, again, we are Gokche Capital. We buy and sell vacant land. You can check us out at gokchecapital.com. 
And our, on our website, you can see our properties as well as our land investing program and our free, free land giveaway. And then of course, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to comment on this video. So thank you for listening and more to come.